Hey guys, welcome to Coding in Flow. In this tutorial, we will learn how we can send data between two fragments using a shared view model. In the past, when we wanted to send data between two fragments back and forth, we had to do it the following way. Both fragments would have to declare their own interface together with an interface method, and the underlying activity then had to implement these two interfaces together with the methods. And when a fragment wanted to send data, it called this interface method on the activity, send the value over, and the activity then had to call a public method on the other fragment to forward the data. So as you can see, this is quite a complicated process. If you want to see an example of this, you can watch the video that you find in the info card box in the top right corner of this video, because there we build the exact same app as here, just with the old approach. But now that we have the Android architecture components, the recommended approach is to use a shared view model instead. First of all, if you have never worked with view model or live data before, make sure to watch my architecture components beginner tutorial first, which you can also find in the top right corner, because otherwise this video here will just confuse you. So the same as an activity can have a view model, a fragment can also have its very own view model, that contains the data for the fragment and is scoped to its lifecycle. But instead of using their very own view model, fragments can also access the view model of the underlying activity, which stays alive as long as the activity is alive, even if we remove the fragment. And we can use this feature to access the same view model from different fragments of the same activity, and this way share data between them. This has the benefit that we have a lot less clutter, because we don't have to declare and implement all these different interfaces, and also the activity doesn't have to decide where it sends the data. Instead, the fragments just communicate with the view model directly, and by using live data, the fragments can then themselves decide what they want to get updated on. For this video, I have already made some preparations. I have already prepared the two fragments you just saw, but right now they don't do anything. The onclick method of the button is empty, and I have just prepared the views. And the main activity does nothing but adding these two fragments to the layout. But you can find the link to the code of this example in the description box below, if you want to take a closer look at it. And I've also already added the lifecycle dependency. If you don't know where you can find this dependency, again you have to watch the architecture components beginner tutorial. Okay, and now we start by creating a view model. So we right click on our package and create a new Java class. We call it shared view model in this example, and it has a superclass view model. At the moment it has this android.arc.lifecycle package name, but in the future this will have the android x package name. We select this and click OK. And the same as in the architecture components beginner tutorial, this view model will contain live data, because live data has the benefit that we can observe it and it is lifecycle aware. In the architecture components beginner tutorial, room returned live data automatically, but we can also create our own live data objects to make any values observable. So we create a private, but not live data, we choose mutable live data. For the type we pass char sequence, because we will just pass a simple text around between the fragments, but live data can wrap any object, including lists, and let's just call it text, equals new mutable live data. To change the value, we write public void set text, where we have to pass a char sequence, Let's call it input. And the reason we use mutable live data is because this is a subclass of live data that exposes these two methods, set value and post value, which we can use to update the value this live data wraps. Set value is the method that we use on the UI thread, and post value is for when we want to call it on the background thread. Here we are on the UI thread, so we call set value and we pass the input. This will update the char sequence in this live data object. And live data will then take care of notifying all the observers about this update. And to access this value and add the observer, we create another method, public. It returns live data, not mutable live data, but just live data, because we don't want to expose these set and post value methods to the outside. So we use the superclass live data, which can be changed, again of type char sequence, and we call it get text and it will return our live data object. So now I'm gonna switch over into one of the fragments and create a member variable for the shared view model. Just gonna call it view model. 
And we already know that in our button on click method, we want to call viewmodel.zText and pass the input from the edit text. Right now, if we would try to execute this, we would get a crash because we didn't assign our view model yet. But the question is, where do we assign our view model? In our main activity in the beginner tutorial, we assigned the view model in the onCreate method and scoped it to the lifecycle of the main activity by passing this as the lifecycle owner to both the view model and the live data. Fragments also have an onCreate method where we could get the view model and observe the live data. But there is a problem with this approach. For this, we have to take a look at the fragment lifecycle. When we start observing our live data object in onCreate, and scope it to the lifecycle of the fragment, the observer gets added here and removed when the fragment is destroyed. This is the lifecycle of the fragment itself. But a fragment also has a second lifecycle, because a fragment consists of two parts, the fragment instance itself and the view it contains, which is basically the layout. And in some situations, for example, when we replace a fragment for another one, but add it to the back stack, the system doesn't destroy the fragment instance, instead it just destroys the viewer and the fragment itself stays alive. When we then navigate back to the previous fragment, the view gets recreated and the fragment is added back to the layout. The same happens when you call detach and attach on a fragment transaction manager to replace a fragment. The problem here is that the live data object keeps track of which observers it has already updated. And since it's the same fragment instance as before, we don't get another update just because we destroyed and recreated the viewer. Because the live data thinks, okay, this is still the same fragment, there's no reason to send another update there. This means that the data is now missing in our layout until we get the next unchanged callback. And to get around this, we would have to add our observer in onCreateViewer, because when we add a new observer, we also get an immediate update from the live data. So we have to move it from onCreate to onCreateViewer, since we go through this method every time the view was destroyed and recreated. But actually, it's recommended to go one step further into onActivityCreated. This is called directly after onCreateViewer, but here we can make sure that the onCreate method of the underlying activity is finished. And since we want to access the view model of the activity, we have to make sure that the activity was already created. So this is where we will put our live data observer into onActivityCreated. So back into our project, we delete onCreate because we don't need it, and instead we overwrite onActivityCreated. If you just want to use the view model of the fragment itself and not the one from the activity, you can also put it into onCreateView. We just use onActivityCreated because we want to access the underlying activity. So here we assign our view model. View model equals the same as in the beginner tutorial, we write view model providers dot off. And if we would want to access the view model of the fragment, we would pass this, but instead we pass get activity. And then we write dot get and pass the name of the view model class shared view model dot class then we want to access our live data object with view model dot get text which is the getter method we created and since this returns live data we can call dot observe where we have to pass a lifecycle owner so now we could pass this to scope it to the lifecycle of the fragment but this creates another problem for this let's take a look at the fragment lifecycle again at the moment we add our observer here. This way we make sure that we get the UI update. And when the view is destroyed and recreated, we add the observer again. But by passing this, we scope the live data to the lifecycle of the fragment instance, which means that the observer only gets removed when we go through on destroy and completely destroy the fragment instance. So every time we only destroy the viewer and go through on activity created, we add a new observer without removing the previous one. And you would notice that you will get more and more updates the more often you will remove and add a fragment back to the layout. And this was actually a bug. And to solve this, the Android team decided to give the fragments view its very own lifecycle that we can pass as the lifecycle owner to the live data, which we do the following way. We don't pass this, we pass get view lifecycle owner. And now this live data object will be scoped to the lifecycle of the fragments viewer not of the fragment instance, which means that when the view is destroyed, the observer gets removed, no matter if the fragment instance is still alive. So if you start observing live data in onActivityCreated or onCreateViewer, you have to pass this method here instead of this. So remember this. And for the observer, we pass newer observer. And in here we retrieve the new text in form of a char sequence whenever the live data changes. And we simply want to set this to our edit text. Set text 
Char-Sequenz. And this is usually how you want to observe live data in a fragment. You want to do it in the lifecycle of the fragment's viewer, and the only reason to scope it to the fragment instance itself would be if your live data doesn't change anything in the user interface. In this case, you don't need the updates every time the view is destroyed and recreated. Then you would observe live data in the fragment's onCreate method instead, but then you would also have to pass this instead of get view lifecycle owner. But again, whenever you want to touch the UI, this is how you want to do it. And now I'm just gonna copy this whole code into the other fragment and just change the layout because everything else works exactly the same. We don't have to make any changes in our main activity here. And now let's test it. Type something into a fragment, click OK. And the other fragment's edit text is updated immediately and vice versa. So this works. And the underlying activity doesn't have anything to do with it. We just use the view model of the activity. Okay, in this example, we display both fragments at the same time. And now you might be wondering what happens when we just display one fragment at a time and switch between them. And the answer is everything works exactly the same because again, the data is not stored in the fragment itself. It's stored in the view model, which is alive all the time. And when a fragment then comes onto the screen, it adds the observer to the live data and immediately gets updated with the newest data in it. And of course, you can also access this data in the activity itself because the view model belongs to this activity. And you could also add more fragments the same way. Okay, this is how you communicate between two fragments using a shared view model. If this video was helpful, please leave a like. And if you want more Android tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. Take care.